my name is uh, Kathy Kate Short. I'm the program manager for FES, uh, handling the national project. And uh, I'm also known as the mother of YLDP. The Youth Leadership Development Program is an FES program that is being implemented in 12 different countries in Sub-Saharan Africa to develop young leaders, critical thinking, and also to contribute towards decision-making in all these countries. So Zambia is a new entrant because other countries started the program in uh, uh, 2001, such as Zimbabwe and others, but we are new entrants into the program and uh, we've been running the Youth Leadership Development Program in Zambia since 2017. We believe that the Youth Leadership Development Program is very important for the continent because 77% of uh, the population in Africa is below the age of 35 or 30, according to statistics. And uh, with us investing in this uh, category of leaders uh, is a necessity because we need them to take up these leadership roles. And that cannot start tomorrow, but we have to prepare them for tomorrow, today. And therefore, its importance can never be overemphasized. And just looking at Zambia also as a case in point, we have more than 80% of the population of this country being under the age of 35. And therefore, we are very, very happy that the Zambian uh, partners have accepted this program and we've been working very well because I think also on their part, they do realize its importance. Young leaders are important and they need to contribute towards decision-making in Zambia and the many other countries where we are investing heavily in this program. If we talk about the selection of uh, YLDP, as we call it in short, so we work with uh, sending agencies who are our partner organizations and that includes political parties, civil society and also the trade unions. So we work with them to select young leaders, promising young leaders that are already working as leaders within their setups and they send us these names and then we do the final selection by subjecting them to an interview process. So it's not open to the public per se but we work through sending agencies as an organization. Also, one of our focus is to, actually our focus is uh, working with uh, partner organizations so that they already have a pool of these young people. So we just bring them together to come and be part of uh, the YODP once they are selected during the interview process, which I must say are quite tough because uh, there is um, a panel that sits and uh, oversees these interviews. So it's always very interesting. And also we work with the trade unions, we work with uh, Zambia Congress of Trade Unions as a, as a sending agency, and also the Federation of Free Trade Unions. We work with the Zambia National Women's Lobby, gender justice is very important to us. And we work also, I think from this year onwards, we've been working with uh, the Young Women in Action amongst uh, the many other organizations with the political parties. We are working with uh, the Patriotic Front, as well as uh, the United Party for National Development. Uh, for now, in the past, we've worked with uh, the MMD, uh, the Movement for Multi-Party Democracy, and uh, that's uh, our setup as at now within the YLDP uh, Zambia. With regards to YLDP 2022, I'm happy to say that we have uh, 24 students that have been accepted into the program and uh, they come from the sending agencies that I just talked about a short while ago. We are really excited and they are coming from uh, all corners of Zambia. We have three block weeks in a, in a, in, in, in a year. And so during this, these three block weeks, uh, the students come in, you know, from um, um, their, their residences and we stay in residence for the whole one week and we have residential class. So there are three of them and in the third block week, they graduate. So gender representation is very, very important for us as an organization. In fact, one of our focal areas is gender justice. So even in the uh, YLDP program, gender consideration is very, very important. We try as much as possible to have 50-50 representation of both genders and then also even within the training 
of uh, the YLDP. Gender equality is one topic that uh, we tackle effectively because we want these young leaders to understand the importance of gender equality at a tender age and also to understand why it's important for both men and women to work together. As you are important to us, like the groups before you have, and we well value you all, and we are also happy that you keep engaging with us as alumni, and we are interested in each, in each person's future career, so we want we will try to stay in touch with you, we will be there for you, and we care for you. And I want you to know that. We will be demanding, you will have to give a lot during this course, starting with the rules. But I'm also committing on behalf of Friedrich Ebert Foundation, we'll also do a lot for you. We'll do our best to help you along, to help you develop, and hopefully to become even better leaders. This should be a two-way street. Not people standing here, showering you with good comments and smart advice, but it should be a process of engagement of a two-way street, of a back and forth amongst us. And in that sense, I always like to stress two things. One is, when we engage, and we had the, we had the soft rules here about respect, we are respecting different positions. We will never, or probably never, agree on everything. We will differ. And we as FES, we certainly do not have the intention to present the objective truth to you. In politics, there is no objective truth. There are well-founded positions. There are many value judgments, but your values may differ from mine. So you have convictions, I have convictions, and we both may be passionate about it. And in between, there might be no objective truth. There's his truth and there's my truth. And we both, at some stage, might try to sell it to the voters. And that's our right in a democracy. And the voters' right is to vote. So please, objectivity is an illusion in the sphere that we are dealing with. We don't have the intention to present to you objective truths, because they don't exist in our field. And this goes together with harmony, harmonious relationships. I always encounter this notion in many African countries I've worked. Oh, we want to have harmonious relationships. People differ. In a society, you have different interests. You have different lobby groups. You have different wants and needs. There cannot be one big, ha big fa happy family. There can never be complete harmony in a society. And I think this is why under this block week, you are going to be taught about the importance of democracy. Even if you do not like someone's opinion, it's about tolerating one another, okay? Let people speak freely. You see, different opinions are healthy. So you find those usually from remote areas. Eh? These, they are what you call geographical challenges, isn't it? In terms of political participation. You know, uh, they te we tend to favor those in the urban areas. But you can see through this first program that I think they've exposed and included uh, other people. And then obviously the other challenge is formal education. There are certain young leaders who probably are discriminated on the basis of their education status. Because sometimes when we ask you as young people, what do you want to become? Right now you want to become Okay, politicians. Why? You want to drive a big car? You want to have access to contracts? Because that's what you know, isn't it? So the question really is, do you have role models who actually have abided uh, by democratic values, who have abided by those values of respecting other people's opinions? I mean, you are hearing what is happening. Now, what are the foundational values that we have learned from our leaders? And what are the values that we can adopt ourselves so that we can become accountable, we can be democratic, so that we can nourish social and political stability? What are these values? For example, the rule of law. I believe somebody in the block class should be able to teach about what is the rule of law? 
What does it mean to respect the rule of law? That's a very, very important value. One of the values here is to promote free speech. You should not be the ones saying, come on, get onto a truck, let's go and stone the diggers newspaper. Let's go and stone Diamond TV. No. And you are the young people who are being used, okay, whether it's in Chipata, whether it's in Chembe, whether it's in Mongu, to storm these radio stations because Akainde Ichilema is from the opposition, he should not be speaking. Those are not the values we should be trained. We should train you in tolerance. Another important value is promoting free and fair elections. You young people should not be used to manipulate elections. Elections should reflect what the true peoples, you know, what they view. Don't change it. You can't decide on behalf of the people. PF had no choice. The people decided, especially the young. You can't change it. So issues of accountability transport is important. The other issue is integrity. It also bothers on. You need to have integrity. You know? If, for example, two weeks ago you appeared in court, okay, for failing to pro follow proper guidelines, how do you come and stand here and start talking about integrity? Ethics, you need to be ethical. People should see you as an upright person. They can come to you, they know that you've got no blemish. Several studies have said that African youths, you are prone to violence, easily manipulated by elders okay, and, and elites, and disengaged from formal politics. But you can take a huge step if you could actually uh, disengage. So that's, I think, one. You can, this is what you can do differently. Move away. Number, the other second issue is the issue about institutions. Young leaders need to reach positions of influence. Okay? Now, how do you uh, reach positions of influence and accountability? Uh, this uh, obviously remains one of the biggest challenges in Africa. Most leaders in Africa have not always responded effectively to the needs of the continent, but there is hope in this rising generation of the youth who could play a critical role in building accountability for successful economic transformation and public service. Whilst young people often play central and uh, catalyzing roles in the movements for democracy around the world, they are less engaged than older generations in voting and party activism. The Zambian youth actually are an exception. Okay, in August 2021, they turned up in large numbers to influence the change of government. Okay, so the young people aged between 18 and 35 obviously constitute over 40 to 45 percent of the country's voting population. One thing that the young people can do differently is to become involved and committed in development process. There is uh, this culture in our nation where we seem to put money above everything else. If you are paid money, you are ready to do anything. That's why one of the issues that I think they will teach you here is how to volunteer and offer yourselves to service. The last point is what advice do I have to the new generation of political leaders to cultivate a critical approach to their own leadership? Number one is constant engagement. You should always engage. So like, for example, by being, attending this program, this is constant engagement, okay? Try to be part and parcel of issues of national importance. So youth political uh, participation means a constant engagement of the younger generation in a number of activities that may lead to policy impact, okay? At community level, national level, and regional level. The Zambian youth should exercise leadership by spearheading the democratic change, okay, uh, and institutional change at various levels. We should ensure that young people are actively engaged in open governance strategies and initiatives, okay, because this is fundamental in building what they call active citizenship.